Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Cynthia and today I'm sharing a very long overdue video for a Ruby and Pearl XO project for back in the month of August. <laughs> Some of you have been waiting for this video and I'm so sorry it took so long. As you can see, I started filming this video um, in August, yeah, and uh, I had been working on this project for about a month and then by the time that I should have um, posted it I was not feeling the greatest and I actually I went into labor uh, at uh, 35 weeks so I was a month early it's still pretty good for twins um, as you can see there I still had a full month to go uh, and that's how I was carrying my belly so <laughs> um, my boys were born on uh, September 12th and um, they were really great sizes everything went so well I truly feel um, extremely grateful and um, can hardly believe it's real life but um, at that time of filming the video I had already been like very pregnant and very uncomfortable. Um, twin pregnancy is definitely not without its challenges. And although I was extremely lucky to to not have any serious complications, and I was essentially only experiencing um, the um, discomfort of a regular pregnancy, but I was experiencing if you can picture if you've ever been pregnant um essentially like those last couple of weeks how uncomfortable you are well I was that uncomfortable for a third of my pregnancy <laughs> so not great but um you know it's uh definitely manageable and now that the boys are here it's uh certainly worth it you might be hearing one of them right now um Xavier is supposed to be sleeping but He's uh, he's not. Winston is. So, so yeah, we welcomed our little baby boys, Winston and Xavier, and everybody's healthy. We're all doing good and slowly getting back into a routine. My husband went back to work uh, a couple weeks ago, so just adjusting to that and taking care of them. And um, yeah, it's been life changing to say the least. So here you can see me just playing around with different uh, printables and um, I went through my collection of printables and selected some that I thought could work for this project. What I'm creating is a folder to host all of the ephemera that I create when I do projects like these um, for Ruby and Pearl and um, I... I had these boxes that held um, some uh, baby carriers so and I thought oh my goodness like these are really good size sturdy and uh, there's the little people so I thought that was kind of perfect for a crafting project so I'm going through the printables and selecting the ones that I feel like working with um there's no method to my madness in that regard I'm just of going with it i'm still trying to just use what i have heather keeps putting out these beautiful kits and i want all of it and i know i'm gonna cave soon but i'm really trying to um make a dent in my stash of um of prints that i already have that uh, i haven't used so for example that uh, little kind of turquoise one is from uh, an older kit and uh, the name of it mm, escapes me at the time but I'll make sure to have it listed down below and I absolutely love it hence I have two of it and I think I might even have more but I really want to try and start using those those pages that I've had for a little while and that um, you know they're just sitting in my bind book waiting for me to do something with them so that's what I'm trying to do here and I thought that the florals of this print here in the middle would be really perfect for the spine 
of this uh, little ephemeral holder. So here you get a better, better look at what I'm working with. And um, still August 29, good. <laughs> or no, the, yeah, I think August 6 is when I started. So we're almost like a full month later. <laughs> and boy, did my belly grow. Who? By that point, you know, sitting was uncomfortable, standing was uncomfortable, laying was uncomfortable, and nothing was comfortable. So 29th, so that means right there I'm just two weeks away from uh, from giving birth. Um, so I'm just going to start assembling the, the elements that I've chosen. Uh, what I am going to do is use some piano paper to, um, to layer the spine because of course that will as you can see like the cutout won't cover everything right <laughs> it's fussy cutted so i need something and i think piano paper is just the perfect filler for that um so that's what i'm going to be using there and i'm also going to use a couple of pieces on the edges as those uh printables are not as wide as the um as what I'm creating. This one here, the witch's dance, I keep holding it and not using it because I want to use it for a Halloween spread and then I keep forgetting that I have it at Halloween. So it's been a couple years now that uh, this happens. <laughs> but there we are. I found a page that um, maybe has a little bit more damage. Whenever I create things like this, um, I'll keep the nicer pages for actual journals and uh, happy mails and whatnot, but the pages that are a little bit more damaged or have more writing on them and, you know, don't look quite as pristine, I'll keep for myself and for smaller projects like this that um, they're not going to be kind of the centerpiece. They're just um, an element to the page. So I'm just going to go a little wild here with my glue and... Uh, You'll see it goes from nothing to everything is covered in glue. Uh, with the glue, I find that, you know, I don't use too much. I just take the time to spread it really well. Um, and then that works well for me. If you use too much, it will seep through and create a lot of um, um, warping of your papers. Now... If you do want to recreate something like this, don't be like me. Think a little bit more ahead of the um, the times, like the hmm, sequence. Everything should be happening because, uh, yeah, here I realized, oh, like I need to put this down first if I want to put because I thought I was going to put the music paper, but then I wanted the music paper to be on top of the green paper. And so I had to put the glue all over where I was going to be putting a green paper. Yeah, you know, just don't be like me. Think ahead. <laughs> and I'm just taking the time to try and fold uh, the book as well as possible so that I'm avoiding as much ripping as possible. I did have some ripping happening. So what I did uh, later on is use some washi tape to uh, kind of mend that. Uh -huh. But if you take the, like right there, I'm taking the time on this side and that side doesn't have much. But then the other side, I kind of forego and uh, the paper ended up splitting quite a bit more. Just something to keep in mind. And I want everything to look a little bit more roughed up. So I'm just taking the time to kind of rip up that paper. <laughs>
these types of projects are some of my favorite because I'm kind of going with the flow. I don't have something specific in mind and just kind of seeing where creation takes me. Um, you might be someone that likes to measure, that likes everything to be extremely symmetrical. That's not me. Uh, but of course, you know, as you create your own, feel free to make everything look the way that works for you and the way that um, that brings you joy, right? For me, I just kind of go with it and a lot of it is well that's good enough for me uh but of course it's different if you're creating something for someone or uh if you're just someone who has that type of attention attention to detail and methodical type of person i um i wish i was but i am not so <laughs> this is what we've got and I'm just gluing down the edge there, making sure that uh, everything is gonna be stuck in place. Now I'm gonna add some more music uh, sheet to the edges as I mentioned before I'm able to go ahead and add the spine section. I hope you're all doing well. Um, it feels so good to finally be taking the time to do a little bit of something for me. Um, as a, If any of you are mothers, I'm sure you know, you know, the babies, they come first and, and it, they should. So it's good to kind of find myself back a little bit and be able to do something for me that I enjoy. And uh, yeah, it just, it feels really nice. Um, I, uh, I've been doing well, all things considered. I mean, we're not getting a ton of sleep, I'll say that. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're, the boys just turned four months uh, about a week ago now. And uh, they, I don't know if it's the sleep progression or what it is, but they sure are not sleeping a whole lot and neither am I. But, you know, we'll get through it and I know that everything is temporary. So that's a, really something that I try to remind myself often is it's all just a phase. And in those hard moments, I mean, when you really think about it, it's such a glimpse in time the the time that they're infants that like in the grand scheme of things it's nothing right it's hard right now absolutely and oh my gosh is it ever and with two it's just it's more than double the work it, it's it's really non-stop but then you get moments um like a few weeks ago it was what like four in the morning and uh one of the boys just would not go to sleep in his crib and here we are rocking him, trying to put him back in the crib and my husband's holding him and, you know, trying not to get annoyed because of course it's just a little baby, you know, that's not their fault. But at the same time, you're thinking, I want to sleep, I work tomorrow. And uh, it, he started laughing in his sleep and he hasn't, the boys haven't laughed yet. And we can tell like they're, they're getting there and they're gonna laugh soon, but he started laughing in his sleep and my husband just like could not handle like how cute that was you know how here i am trying to rock you to sleep it's the early hours of the morning what are you doing why are you laughing it was sweet but try to hold on to those little moments of joy and really uh, savor them while we can because it's it's all happening so quickly. I already can't believe that it's been four months since uh, since they've arrived, and I, you know, seeing those um, those clips with my belly, I can't believe. Just a a little while ago, I was so big. Oh my goodness, I could hardly walk around. I was all belly, and. Um, I'm very thankful for that. And I know not all women experience it that way. Like I am very aware that 
I got, uh, I got off easy. But man, did it feel good to not have the belly anymore? Wow. Just being able to move around and feel like you get your body back is, it's really um, quite an interest, interesting um, uh, experience, something to, to, to kind of feel. I did want to share briefly um, a little bit about my experience. Now, I'm not going to go into very many details, but I just wanted to say, um, you know, kind of answer some of the common questions that I've gotten uh, about my the, about the, the coming of my boys. <laughs> um, I did go into labor spontaneously, and I was 35 weeks, so the boys were born at 35 in two days. Um, we had no complications, neither me or them. Uh, I had a really, really good team at the hospital that, uh, we're at. And, uh, the boys came during a hurricane, of course. Well, my water broke, um, right before the hurricane. And then the hurricane happened as we were in stay at the hospital. So that was, um, all things considered very good because I know that, where we live, uh, they lost power for a while, and um, that would not have been very pleasant to come home with two newborns to no power. So <laughs> we're very, very lucky. Um, and uh, what else can I say? Um, yeah, the boys were born um, very good sizes for being twins and for being preterm. Uh, Winston was five pounds, nine ounces, and Xavier was six pounds, two ounces. So really good sized babies. We did stay in the hospital for six days uh, post delivery as um, they had a little bit of jaundice and um, like their blood sugar levels and um just the feeding is very hard with preemies to, to feed them because they're so sleepy. So, but we didn't do any NICU time. So all things considered, we got extremely lucky, best outcome, you know, that, that really could have, uh, could have happened in my opinion. And, uh, yeah, we brought the babies home and the rest is history. Now they're doing well. They're just four months now. And it's, uh, it's really quite the ride to, to see them grow and learn new skills. And we're finally hitting that mark where they are continuously achieving new things, right? They're starting to, well, they started smiling a little while ago. And now they're starting to play with toys and really grabbing things and um, interacting a little bit more. So we're out of the potato stage a little bit and uh, moving towards the... Uh, it's a little bit more fun stage. It comes with its challenges, but oh, it fills your cup a little bit more. So overall, uh, just just very thankful and grateful for my experience uh, all through pregnancy and uh, delivery. Now, I'm sure it's going to be something that I'm going to be journaling a lot about. I I created a journal, and I'd like to share that eventually. But I created a journal about uh, for all my things pregnancy related and you know boys arrival related but I haven't journaled in it yet so as I mentioned in uh, my previous video I just sometimes when there's too much happening for me when the emotions are too big I'm unable to put it into words and I'm just not ready to journal about it so I sense that soon enough I'll be ready to 
kind of disclose what happened to me, right? Like to my journal and uh, leave it behind there. Remember, but, you know, move forward with, uh, with the new steps. Anywho, um, here I'm just showing you how I created the inside of this ephemera holder. So what I've done is, uh, as I mentioned, I'm trying to use up like scraps and all that kind of stuff, right? And um, I'm using these cards that I have. They're just greeting cards, but I have no use for them. I don't particularly like their style and I know I'm not going to, you know, really use them in any capacity. So I thought this was the perfect opportunity because they're quite sturdy. They're going to hold ephemera really well and uh, it just gives me a new purpose for them. So I've used um, as like a kind of a spine section, I guess. I've used some watercolor paper. So that's very thick and sturdy. I folded it in half and on each sides of each flap, I'm able to create these pockets with the cards. So right now I'm just showing you like me putting things in there, but we'll create a couple together. Um, so for they're great sizes because all of my little cards fit in them, uh, all the tags I've created and the smaller ephemera. Now I do want to say, you know, you can make this much prettier, much more like refined. You can make your pockets all the same. You could sew them. Um, you can really like create something absolutely beautiful. Not that this is not pretty, but my goal here really was to use some of the things that I have on hand and um, to produce my paper waste essentially. So I'm using washi tape because my washi needs to be used because I can tell that some of the glue is starting to stick more and it's not as uh, reusable. So I'm trying to use up my washi tape. So I'm just doing using the tape for creating the pockets and uh, kind of sticking together the card. And then on the outside of the cards, I create another pocket with some leftover printables that I have. So often I'll use small elements of a printable and then I'm left with kind of a mismatch of random parts that are oddly shaped. So that's where I'm saying, you know, you could go ahead and use a brand new paper or uh, a digital print, whatever you may wish to create a pocket and you can make them all the same and all the same size. And what I'm doing here is using my scraps. So <laughs> it's not all perfect. It's not all cohesive, but it's reducing my paper waste. And that's kind of what I'm after. So I've just used a couple pieces of washi tape on the edge to glue that there, but also that you know, it doesn't shut it so tightly that I can't fit the ephemera in and out easily. And then, so you can see here, just a random piece of a um, printable and I'm just cutting it. I mean, I want it to be slightly okay, slightly of a good shape, but that's good enough for me. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use some double-sided tape there. You could, like I said, sew I think would be really great because then everything would be extremely sturdy. Um, especially if you wanted to create something like this for someone, you know, it would add that extra, extra touch, finishing touches, right? And uh, make it really beautiful. And so that's what I'm gonna be doing here, just um, using those and you know, I could have added some pockets to the inside of the book as well. Uh, I didn't, but <laughs> maybe something that I'll revisit eventually. Now, I'll mention for the spine, what I end up doing is using my crocodile and creating three holes at the top, three holes at the bottom. I put eyelets in them and therefore my signatures are removable easily. I'm going to use some ribbon to tie everything and it's just a very like foolproof easy way to create uh, something like this. I didn't film that section. I was 
too pregnant. <laughs> so, uh, but I do show it at the end of the video. Uh, but I do think that's about all that I do here. Uh, I am going to create a few more pockets there with you, but I'll let you enjoy that to some music. I hope you're all doing really well. I cannot wait to share more videos and get back into creating and having new projects to work on. Um, yeah, it's been really fun to dabble back into into that aspect of, uh, of me and uh, of my personality. So yeah, I hope you're all doing really well. I thank you so, so much for joining me today. And until next time, I do wish you a great day and a great week. And feel free to leave a comment down below about how you're doing and anything that might be on your heart. I'll talk to you all in my next one. And thank you again. Bye for now.